appreciate y'all being here today. Uh, apologize for my voice. We're on uh, day six of camp here, so getting warmed up and um, you know really excited about the direction we're going. Excited about our whole defensive staff and the players we get to work with. And um, with that, open it up for questions. Yep. How does a guy like Javon Bullard come along since uh, you've been you've been since he's arrived at Georgia in the last couple of years? You know, uh, Javon's an extremely hard worker. I think, uh, you know, we ask all of our guys to compete uh, at a certain level every day in strain, and Javon does a great job of that. Um, you know, he's a guy that was part of that COVID class. So, you know, you learn a lot about those guys when they get here, and uh, you know, he's a competitor and, and brings the type of, you know, energy that we want all of our guys to, uh, to have. Yeah, Coach, I guess the position that you might work most closely with is the inside linebackers. So, one, how do you replace all those guys you lost from last year? And what do you see from these guys like Tresman and Ryan and, um, you know, Smile Monda and all those guys? Yeah, I think uh, you never ask somebody to replace somebody else, right? You ask them to be the best version of themselves. So that's what camp's about, is going out there and every day uh, seeking excellence and challenging yourself to be that, be the best version of yourself. And so in that room, um, I think we're doing that every day. And, you know, I'm thankful that, you know, we're healthy and guys are pushing and, and they're pushing each other. And I think the one thing that uh, the standard that was set from those guys and the guys before them is that, uh, you know, everybody's competing together. And, you know, it's, it's about the, the team and about each other. And these guys embrace that as well. And so I'm excited to see where we go. Raise your hand. Yeah, I'm just curious. What do you think the best version of Jalen Carter looks like, and how do you help him get the most out of that? Yeah, I think um, I think the best version of anyone, right, is somebody who plays. When you play defensive football, you have to you know play at a certain level in terms of your effort, right, and toughness, your mentality, uh, your competitive edge, right. So, the best version for him, anyone else in the front, anyone else in the defense, would be those traits, playing as hard as you possibly can with the toughness required. Um, and, and competing, right? You gotta win your battles, right? And that's what we expect of all our guys, and especially him. Glenn, you've obviously been with Kirby for a little bit. How much does this defense change year to year based on who's the guy in charge of the room and in charge of the defense calling the plays, or how much does it just not change because it's Kirby Smart and Nick Saban, Coach and Tree, et cetera, the defense? There's been, there's been a couple. A couple, couple years, a couple years, six right. years, like forever. Yeah, yeah it's uh, uh, it's been a minute, I guess. I was trying to figure out how many more years it would be to get where you know you've had that saying about your wife, where you go and say, hey, I've I've had more li more years in my life with my wife than I have without her, and um, you know I was trying to figure out the other day where where I have to get to to get to that point. But uh, I think you know when you are coaching defense, you have to evolve at the times, right? Every year, what offenses are going to do to attack you and, and their trends offensively are going to change. So no matter where this defense has existed, no matter who's been in charge of it, no matter what the coaches on staff have been or the players, the goal has been to create a defense that can create problems for offenses, answer the challenges they present. Right. So every year, that'll look a little bit different. Um, our top calls every year are a little bit different. Right? The way we use our personnel it's a little bit different to figure out who your best players are, what you need to do successfully, and you do as a staff cooperatively to give yourself the best chance on game day. And you know, when you do that, you know, you get a good product. I was wondering if you could speak on uh, linebackers Ryan Davis and uh, Trent and Marshall. I feel like their career's been a bit hindered by depth and injury up until this point, and they've waited their turn now. So I was wondering how you see them coming to form. Yeah, um, one, I'm, I'm Really excited that those guys have been guys that have battled it out throughout their career, right? They've had um, some hardships, right? It's part of the game. And they've remained uh, positive. They remain focused and determined. And so, you know, to see them out there competing is, is awesome for me as a coach because you respect what they've done. And, you know, if they continue to do that, I'm hopeful for them, right? Uh, when you lose a number of guys and you know have a, have a number of guys drafted, how do you go about kind of creating cohesion with a new group and, and just a, a new group of guys getting used to each other? Right. So, you know, every, every day 
you know, we go out to practice and, and we want to challenge guys to get used to playing with other people, right? So it might be you go out there and hey, today this guy's going to rotate and play with this other player at linebacker or at safety or at defensive front. I think you're preparing yourself for the whole room to be policing. You know, you have 48 guys here when you count scholarship and walk on on defense, right? And they're all out there and they'll all get to play with each other. They're, and, you know, to be good on defense, you have to have um, a real team bond and connection and unity. And so that can't be that I'm comfortable with one guy, right? Because then you're not ready when the next man steps up. So throughout camp, we, you know, we're trying to all grow, but we also are pairing different people with each other and making people get really comfortable being uncomfortable so that we're not reliant on just one person, we're relying on the whole unit. And I think that's how you do it. Well, how does uh, year seven at Georgia feel different as his co-coordinator uh, with Will, and how is that kind of um, evolving as you guys you know, have to separate what he's doing, what you're doing, what was kind of the workload uh, for that? You know, when you're here, whether it's year one or year seven, a lot of the stuff on a day-to-day -day basis you know, you really do cooperatively, right? That's why that's why it's a, a staff. Obviously, there are roles within the staff, but um, when you set out to have a staff, whether it's as a, a full coaching staff, defensive staff, support staff, you want people to complement each other. Um, you want people to be able to, uh, you know, you can't have one person do everything. You gotta be able to share responsibility. And, and so, you know, titles and people and things of that nature, they change, but the thing that remains the same is that when we go in that room, whether it's as a full staff or a defensive staff, we're working to get on the same page um, and fight, figure out what's best for our team. And then obviously when you get to the time where certain responsibilities have to be separate, you do that. But the majority of what we do is, is cooperatively um, on a day-to-day -day basis, no matter what the roles are. Um, yeah, Coach, that's good uh, in part, but is there any individual that you would Tell us about, I know it's a team and everybody's needed, but are there any certain players that you could share some info on or maybe comment on what Coach Muschamp brought to his part of the team effort? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I understand obviously the, the, the question there, right? But we had 19 players on defense play over 200 snaps last year, right? So, you know, I do think that team talk on, on defense is extremely important. And it's extremely important on the whole team. You know, you're looking for as many people that can play winning football as possible, right? Um, you know, the individuals that, that stand out a lot of times, like they're, they're gonna be guys that, that you can identify that you've already identified potentially. But, you know, the team talk's extremely important this time of year just because our only way to play to the standard on defense here is to get that and to get the team and to get everybody playing together at a high level because you know, as the check, there's 11 guys on defense at once, right? And everybody has to fit their gap properly in the run game. You run a pressure, everybody has to be in the right area. You, you sit there in coverage. You know, certain guys have the flat, certain guys are responsible deep. And so at the end of the day, the only way to actually be good on defense as a, as a unit is to be a team, right? You'll see great defensive players places sometimes that maybe you're saying, hey, how did they have that guy? And they weren't overly successful on defense. And our guys, no matter who it's been since we've been here, have taken pride in that aspect. And, you know, we do as well as the staff. Um, in terms of Will, you know, since he's been here, you know, last year and obviously moving into this year, obviously brings a wealth of experience. He's a great staff guy. Um, we really enjoy working together, not just him, but our whole defensive staff, all staff in general, um, as much as we ever have. And so I think he brings a sense of camaraderie, professionalism, experience. He's a great sounding board for ideas. Um, and for as much success he's had in his career, he's extremely humble at the same time, which I think humility shows a lot about who a person is. Uh, Glenn, back in the spring, we heard a lot about Jamon Demas Johnson. Just what have you seen from him during the summer and then this early part of fall camp? Yeah, I think he's challenged himself um, to be the best version of himself. Uh, he knows in the summer you attack strength and conditioning to be able to say, hey, I might have an increased role this year, right? So, hey, what do I have to do in terms of my strength and conditioning to be able to play um, whatever role is asked of me, you know, from the team? He's a uh, guy who loves football, you know, practices really hard. He's an uh, instinctive physical player, 
and you know, but you know, need to continue to see him grow, right? All everybody needs to continue. We're on day six of practice, right? We got to all continue to grow. But I've seen him try to step up and answer the challenge. Um, you know, whether that's him or you know, we had questions earlier about Tresman, you know, Marshall and Ryan Davis. We had questions asked about Smile Mund and all those guys. You know, those guys in addition to Xavier Sori, Jalen Walker, EJ Lightsey, the whole room understand what's expected in, in terms of running the defense. And there's a level of pressure that applies to you. And so we're all trying to answer it. But he's done he's done a great job so far and he just has to continue to grow. Uh, quarterback question, Coach. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the candidates that might play opposite Keely Ringo, maybe who the candidates are, one of their strengths, and if you touch on uh, Singletary and Humphreys, if you will. Yeah, I'll touch, uh, first I'll touch on the question you asked about um, Slim and, and Julio. You know, I think when you look at, at Singletary, he's long, you know, he's competitive, uh, he loves football, he has good ball skills. Um, Julio is extremely fast, right, and, and has great size. And you know another guy has you know he's willing he's willing in terms of his toughness out there, which is required at that position. So you know, asking about them, they're both you know working to become the players they need to at corner, right? Um, for them, they got here this summer and they're putting in the work and they're they're really making good progress. And, and now it's the hey, how we're on day six. How can you continue to build and stack days as as camp gets harder? Um, you know, the rest of the room, you look at. Uh, Jalen Everett was here with us through the spring. Um, Kamari Lasseter and Nylon Green, all those guys are working out there. And we dual train a lot of guys. So, you know, guys, have, you, if you go back to the very beginning, Chris Smith started out at, at corner, you know, and, and ended up becoming a safety, right? So we try to dual train everybody. So there'll be other guys that go out there and play as well. Um, and so, you know, that competition is, is well underway and, and it's changed up every day. And we try to mix and match them, right? We don't just have one guy running um, in any group. So they get to go against different wideouts every day. Challenge. And so until we get to a scrimmage and really see, you know, who shows up when it's live and the coaches are off the field and it's, it's live tackle, you know, we'll know more about the competition then. Hey coach, whether it's true or not, one of the headlines all off season has been this defense is going to be worse. Is that something, whether it's true or not, is that something that you think this current group uses as any sort of motivation or is it just a complete look forward to next season? I think that when you look at what we do here defensively, all these kids took pride in being a defensive football player when they came here, right? They're part of it, you go back to Georgia since Kirk Russell has been you known for playing great defense, right? So guys who come here believe in themselves that they can go be as good as they want to be defensively and, and collectively that we can do that. So I don't think anybody's worried about what other people think about what we're going to be. I don't think they're using it for motivation. I think they go out there every day and just trying to be the absolute best defense we possibly can. And you know, all that external stuff, I don't, I don't see a group that needs external motivation. I think they're very intrinsically motivated. And I think that they're focused and they're working the right way right now. Yeah, Glenn, when you've got guys at inside linebacker that are as athletic as Smile and Xavier and Jalen Walker even, I mean, what type of um, flexibility is that out of the defense in terms of playing those guys maybe at star or down on the edge? Um, what does that add and how beneficial is that for y'all as the defensive staff? Well, I think if you watch us play in nickel, if you look at what our, our star is, our star is really a, a slot corner, which is really how most of the uh, you know, National Football League plays their, their nickels. So I think we're asking them to be inside linebackers, right? Which in today's day and age of football isn't really a box linebacker anymore. It's an off-ball linebacker. So the whole room knows that in order to be successful, you have to be able to blitz, you have to be able to cover, you have to be able to play in space, right? All, all those factors, traits that in the old school days of 4-3 football, you would say, oh, that's what an outside linebacker does, right? That's basically what you're asking from the whole room. So in order in order for us to be successful defensively, they gotta be, you know, have a versatile skill set. Um, you mentioned those guys that obviously have length and are athletic and played kind of on the edge in high school. Um, but that's what the challenge we're, we're asking the whole room to have that. And the more guys that can do those things, that can be good blitzers, can be good in coverage, can play in space, we can do a lot. We have a lot of flexibility, right, with what we can do defensively. And when we get through the, the two scrimmages and we kind of identify who are, our, who are our best players, then you'll see our 
rotation and the way we use guys in packages kind of take place as we get ready for games, right? This time right now in camp, we're all, it's a lot of base packages. And then when we figure out, hey, who's our best players and what roles in all rooms, right, in all rooms, then we'll decide, hey, how are we using these guys on third down? How are we using them on first and second down? Um, and you saw every, every year our packages are a little bit different, you know, and so, but I do think fundamentally the nickel is like a, is a slot corner when you look at um, the way defensive football is played most of the time nowadays. Hey, can we just talk about the importance, if you don't mind, about uh, getting Nolan Smith back, not just for what he does for the outside back position, but I think everybody's pretty aware of what he does as far as being kind of that voice of the defense, so to speak, but also just the outside linebacker as a whole. Uh, a lot of use uh, from some of those experienced guys you got. Yeah, uh, Nolan is. Um, no one is one of those guys that when you say, hey, if you're gonna talk about it, be about it. And he's known for being vocal because he is, but he holds himself to an extremely high standard in terms of how he works. Uh, I think that that you can see that in that room, that that's something that they take pride in. And you know, defensively, he wants to challenge everybody to do the same thing. But he's been a great leader for us. He works really hard every day. He has great toughness and, he, and right now, um, he's looking to be the best version of himself and improve in areas. You know, he wants to be a better pass rusher. Right? He's working extremely hard at that. And he's really stepped out even more in terms of what he's doing as a leader. And that room, um, you know, I, I see a lot of guys matching that. Robert Beal is, has a lot of the same traits in terms of maybe not being as vocal, but in terms of how he carries himself in practice. You know, you look at a guy like Chess Chambliss, he's extremely tough and a hard worker. MJ Sherman matches that. You can go guy by guy, and then when you walk in and you have freshmen, you know you have Marvin Jones, Darius Smith, C.J. Madden, and they see a room that's extremely hardworking and tough, not just from one guy, but from all the guys ahead of them. Then they know what the expectation is, and so you know when you see them out there, that that kind of becomes the reputation of the room. Coach, obviously there's big shoes to fill at on the edge and at defensive end. What have you seen from Tyrion Ingram Dawkins as he enters his second season, and, and that makes you confident that he can be? One of those guys. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, you know, when he went into the, the spring, he really attacked his body and his ability to be a guy that, you know, can play on the edge. And, you know, he continued. That's, that's, a, that's a battle that you, you take as a big guy every single day, all throughout the summer into fall camp. You know, the biggest thing is when you're lean, when you're leaner, and you can be quicker and more explosive, it's beneficial, right? That's at, that's at every position. And so, He's really done that, and we want that in position, whether it's him or Tramel Walthour or Michael Williams, those guys, when they're out there, you want them to be guys that are you know, able to be quick, athletic, lean, guys that can you know, make plays in terms of pursuit, but also be stout enough to go inside. So I think that his growth, um, especially in the spring when he was when he, when he's lean and he leaned himself up, it helped him. Let's take two more questions. Glenn, on, on paper, there's still a lot of talent on this defense, just a lot of younger talent. How do you kind of weigh that versus the kind of experience you got? You do have back like six-year seniors, guys who have played a little bit more when you decide who you want to roll out there to start the season. You know, I think the saying that's lived here for a long time now has been if you're good enough, you're old enough, right? So camp is about figuring out who our best players are. Right, and that doesn't have, you know, a birth date on it. So we need to figure out who our best players are. You challenge them early, right? You challenge guys early across the board, whether they're old or young, to see, hey, what can what can they learn? What can they handle? What do we need to work on them with? What do they do best? And then as you go in and we go through our scrimmage one, kind of lessens a little bit, and now you're fine tuning it and you're saying, hey, okay, who performed and who did it? And as you see guys perform. You know, ultimately, it's the coach's job to coach, right? We're teachers. So when you look at it, and if you identify a guy who can help you in terms of talent, no matter how old he is, then let's figure out how we can coach that guy to help us and create a role for him, whether that's as a guy who plays a lot or in a certain package, right? So, you know, I think once you identify who those guys are, and make, then we make sure that we attack it to get them up to the, that line that we need to be at in terms of ability to be on the field and help us. When we talked to Key Livingo this spring, he talked a lot about working on his confidence in order to help him. As a coach, how do you go about instilling confidence in him that way he can go out there and play with it? Right, I think it's important for you to believe in your players, right? Like, you know personally 
who believes in you. And so I think showing belief in your players, right, no matter their age, no matter their experience, is extremely important as a coach because if you don't believe in them, why would they believe in themselves? So I think starting with that, if you want to instill confidence in any player, right, you got to build them up. You got to challenge them when they're wrong. But sometimes the best thing to do after a guy's mistake is love on them, right? You can correct them in the meeting room. So in terms of building any player's confidence, you know, old man, it starts with us. Believe in them, coach them, lead them, right? Challenge them when they need it. But they need, they need to know that the coaches believe in them and their teammates believe in them. And that goes back to the whole question of, hey, team is really important, right? The more that we're a team, the more that we're united, guys will believe in themselves. I'm going to take one more quick one right here. I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. I know since you've been here at Georgia, uh, uh, three of your you know, former coach mates, so to speak, have gone to become head coaches in different places. I just wonder for you personally, you know, everybody's got their own goals. Is that something you one day would like to do? You know, the thing I tried to do when I was a GA, right, is always think about how I can be the best GA and whatever that was. And then it ended up being something where I became, you know, a slightly higher role, still support staff. And I just tried to do that job the best I could. And so I've done that since I've been here. And I really try not to be like too forward thinking. There's times and places for that. But ultimately, people don't, you know, that quote that Coach Smart had last year before training camp about, you know, success coming to those who are too busy to be looking for it. It's a very real quote. You know, it's not coach speak, it's a real thing. So I try to live that. Preach to your players, be where your feet are. And that's what it's all about. Thanks, Glenn.